folks. Well, thanks for joining me again for another Sunday pottering around my greenhouse. Both better start off with style. Get some of this on the go. So, most weeks, or lots of the last weeks, I've just been showing you the harvest that's coming out of the greenhouse. Um, I've been doing that mainly just to kind of prove that literally every single week we're getting a harvest out of this greenhouse. We don't have, sorry, I can't resist this. We don't have to keep buying things from Sainsbury's all the time. And it can just come out here whenever we like. And find something nice to eat. Mm. Lots of strawberries today. And I have mentioned on a few videos. Mm. Sorry. At least in the comments. Sorry. And I have mentioned in a few videos, at least in the comments, that I'm planning on trying to keep things growing over the winter. But I'm not going to heat the greenhouse. Now when I say I'm not going to heat the greenhouse, I'm not going to heat the empty building, I'm not going to heat the air in here. I'm going to try and keep the plants a bit warmer though. And reading up on all of this, um, I've been reading up on the temperature of nutrients, specifically all the liquid running through these NFT rails, and in the uh, beds behind me, and in the BWC buckets down here. And um, oxygen content inside the nutrients depends a lot on temperature, and the colder the nutrients are, the more dissolved oxygen they'll hold. So at 10 degrees C, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you're looking at storing 13 parts per million of dissolved oxygen in the nutrients. Um, at 20 degrees C, that drops to 9 to 10 parts per million, and at 30 degrees C, you're down to 7 parts per million, and um, that's a big risk of the plants running out of oxygen. However, the opposite applies to the rate of growth and the root respiration on the plant, basically if you go from 10 degrees C to 20 degrees C, the roots are twice as efficient at taking up the, the oxygen and the nutrients. And again, going from 20 to 30 degrees C, the roots become even more efficient at absorbing nutrients and absorbing oxygen and circulating that around the plants. So my plan is, I'm going to try heating the nutrients to 20 degrees C, um, and it will be 20 degrees C going through all the NFT rails, through these flood and drain beds behind me. Um, and I figure heat rises, so having 20 degrees C heat underneath the plant will rise through into the leaves a bit. And as long as the leaves don't get too cold, and I'm reading up on this, too cold seems to be below about 7 degrees centigrade, but something like 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the plants will continue to grow, albeit a bit more slowly. So, I've, I've been trying to find out, and I haven't found a definitive answer on this, so I'm going to see how I get on. Um, I'll give it a try, it might fail. But um, while I've got... Oh, look at those. I might just have to get the camera. Wow. Right, I'm back in my chair, but now you can see why I kept getting distracted as I was sitting here. This is the 5th of October now, we're Sunday the 5th of October and I've still got it going on. I've got peppers, but look at these tomatoes, they're everywhere. And that tomato plant, and this garden pearl tomato. Let's just uh, move this aside. There we are, look at that. I mean, it's going to be a monster crop of tomatoes again this week. Right, you probably... Oh, no, you haven't listened to me ramble on for long enough yet. The other thing I wanted to say while I was sitting here with a beer was a big thank you to all the people that have subscribed to me in the last few weeks. It's a really big encouragement to carry on making more videos, um, to show you what I'm up to, and just lets me know that people like what I'm doing here. So, um, a big thank you to anyone who's subscribed. Thank you ever so much. I really do mean it. It means a huge amount to me. Right, you've probably had enough of me rambling on, so I'm going to give you a quick tour of the crops in here, because this just looks fantastic right now. Right, I'll get the camera. I know I already showed you this tomato once, but look at it. It's just glorious. 
so many tomatoes still, even into October. Definitely growing these sweet aperitif next year. My ultrasonic fogger has given up. I think it's mucked up with gunk. Um, I did give it, oh there we go. I think it's mucked up with gunk. Um, I did give it a wash in the middle of the week and it started working again for a day or so and then it packed up again. But um, this golden berry I'm going to move out of here today and put it in either a DWC container, probably a DWC container, or I might try and make some Dutch buckets. That scares the hell out of me every time that thing does that. That's the uh, raised beds kicking in. They'll shut up in just a few seconds. They really will. There we go. Um, so my exciting things for today is one of the spring onions that I planted. Only one so far has poked its head through. So those seedlings, those seeds are obviously germinating there. Um, no signs of the garlic yet, but on Wednesday I came back from work and I noticed that I'd got some, three of the onions had started sprouting. So I got out my old USB camera, um, not USB, my old digital photo camera and um, set it up to do some time lapse. Um, it runs at the rate of one second for each hour so we've got about four days worth here and you can see the onions sprouting beautifully there and um, after it had been running for a day or so I thought oh yeah you might as well see the seedlings in time lapse as well so I just stuck them on the corner there but um, I see we've got another new arrival through today as well and this is uh, can you see that on the camera? Yep, number 10 of the onions that have sprouted. So that's 10 of them on the go so far, um, but excellent. I'm really, really pleased. Um, the last couple of weeks, I thought things weren't growing that quickly, but right now, we're back into full production. Okay, harvest time. Here's the harvest for October the 5th. Um, the sweet aperitif that I let go to two stems, which puts out smaller tomatoes and less of them. The single stem sweet aperitif, which puts out a thousand tomatoes on the plant, and uh, yeah, really good. The garden pearl determinate tomato, the last of the cucumbers, not very impressive. Um, I only took three peppers because we don't really need that many this week, I don't think. It should be a nice dinner tonight though. Um, and the ones that I've let get overripe or that have uh, sat on the floor or basically they're going on the compost heap though I'm sure they're still usable but um, there's enough for us to use there. It does seem almost criminal to cut this cucumber down when so much of it is still looking so fine but of course it's only the top um, it, it's still getting powdery mildew it's, it's fighting but it's not really winning and um, mainly it's stopped putting out fruit those two have been on the vine for three or four weeks and they're just not getting any bigger. And that's the last of it. There's no female flowers up there, it's all male flowers. So um, that's the end of it for the cucumber. And that's poor cucumber. This is the end for you, my friend. It's got the cucumber all cut down from the ceiling and the thing I'm really waiting to see, having seen other people's um, NFT rails and the clogging up with roots, is to see how easy it is to get that out of the tube. So the roots on this thing actually only go as far as there because at some point in the past I pulled them back on themselves, so that's not too bad. It's a lovely mat of roots in here there. It's just fantastic, really. They just look marvellous. Such healthy looking roots. Um, and I know they come all the way around this side as well. And there we've got plenty there. So here goes. Timing. 
个视频就是什么呀？But um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten paces long altogether, from top to tail. And uh, what a fine plant it was! But, um, compost heap for that now. So I've got these three aquarium heaters which I'm going to use to try and keep the nutrients warm and um, given that the total there is 550 watts, that's over half a kilowatt of power, I'm pretty sure we'll manage to keep those three tanks of nutrients at 20 degrees C and um, I have got some more splash proof sockets but because I'm feeling lazy today I'm just going to use this outdoor dry box thing that cost a tenner and um, plug them into there for now, it'll keep it all electrically safe, nice and dry, and I can wire in some proper sockets later. So as I do my nutrient changes today, I'm going to add in those water heaters, and then after today, the nutrients will never go below 20 degrees C. Well, not that you can see much really, but um, I've got all my heaters installed now. Three heaters, one per reservoir. Um, this one's got a thermometer in it, which you probably can't see on the camera, but we're up to about 16 degrees so far and rising. We should get to 22, I've got all the thermometers set to. Right, that's all. Um, thank you for joining me today, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed what I've been up to. Cheers, everyone.